about this coyote. He, he tame. Looks mean. and fires right up. Yeah, what we got here is the case, which they bought out David Brown, 995. It's around 65 horsepower, non-turbocharged diesel tractor. I got this with the other four tractors back last summer. This was actually one of the two that I wanted. I wanted that big Massey and then I wanted this small one because it's got a pretty good sized motor for how compact it is. So I managed to get this tractor back last summer this was the second one I got out of there I think if I recall correctly and it had a whole bunch of weights on the front of it and there was no power steering could barely even turn this thing to get it out of the barn managed to get it out enough where I could pull the weights off front tires were shot they had car tires on there I got some of these Carlisle's put on it and I decided to drive it all the way home I had my girlfriend come up and follow me and we got started off pretty good 
had it fired up okay. It was running down the highway just a little bit, turned to take the back roads the rest of the way. It was going all right, and I managed to uh, turn one road too soon from where I should have been. Went to turn around, and the linkage for the clutch broke right off, snapped right here. It had been repaired before, and it was a poor weld job. Popped off, so we were stranded out on a dead end road. And uh, I had to call dad, and he came up and gave me a tow back to our property. I then pulled this off and welded it back up enough where I could pretty much get it home. It wasn't quite right. I could get her put into gear, but it was just at the bare minimum clutch travel for disengagement. <clears throat> so, girlfriend followed me the rest of the way. We ended up managing to make it back, and I got that fixed now. So far, there's not a whole lot wrong with this tractor. It needs some small things here and there. Actually, you can see here it still says David Brown on it, although the, it says Case, but <clears throat> they bought out David Brown. Anyway, the, the only things I've really done to it so far is change out these tires and then the power steering pump. Like I said, there was no power steering. The seal was bad in here and it was leaking all the power steering fluid straight into the crankcase. There's way too much oil in the crankcase. I pulled the power steering pump off and rebuilt it last fall. The alternator was cracked here. I did a little plastic welding on it just to kind of keep the housing together. Although I apparently didn't get it sealed up quite right because uh, here on one of these mating surfaces it's leaking pretty bad right now, you can see. So we're getting this tractor out now to go pull some logs out of the woods that we've got down because it get around in the woods real well. It's also got differential lock on it, which is handy. So I'm going to have to pull that power steering pump back off and make a new gasket for it or see what's going on there, get it sealed back up so it's not leaking. I did start running motor oil in it in case it does leak some into the crankcase. It's not a difference of two fluids. This thing's not in perfect shape. It's got 3,200 hours on it. My understanding is it's, it was rebuilt actually not too long ago, hours-wise anyway. Most of the lights work, the gauges are working. It's got an interesting transmission on it. It's got a uh, high low, a low slow, and a high slow, and then you've got three gears in reverse. And you can really get some, some slow speeds out of this for pulling. It's got differential lock on it, brakes. I do like that it has this foot it's got this foot throttle and your uh, hand throttle up here, which is pretty handy. To engage the PTO, you actually pull up this lever, which is, seems kind of odd, and hold it in place. But other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot wrong with it. This, uh, this wheel back here is wobbling a little bit. I think it's a little lopsided. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it now. Eventually, I'd like to jack it up take this wheel off and uh, since these are spin outs these eccentrics are basically locked up on here these cams I tried turn them with the regular wrench couldn't do it can't hardly find a square drive socket to fit these it's like a 13 millimeter I've got a uh, standard square drive I can't find any metrics so I think what I'm gonna do is take the wheel off pull these brackets off all around the wheel and then put some heat to these eccentrics beat back and forth on them try to get them loosened up when they're actually off and not not held in place on those spin outs so now I pulled the uh, fill plug out and checked and it's actually still got a lot of fluid in it so I'm going to try to suck it as much of it out as I can so I don't waste it you know when I first saw these fluid extractors I thought they were kind of gimmicky but man, this thing's so handy. I use it all the time. For things like this, you know, where you gotta pull some fluid out. Whoops.
I had to make a special half inch wrench to get in here and fit on this one nut. On the back side, it's too narrow to get a standard wrench in. Luckily, I threw it in the toolbox. Yeah, I got the power steering pump out. <clears throat> Here's what I think's going on. I rebuilt this back in the fall. You know, it's got all new seals and O-rings and everything. So I don't think it's leaking from the pump itself because it still had pretty good fluid level when I checked it. I think what it is, it's this gasket that goes between the power steering pump and uh, flange off the front of the crankcase here for the, for the gears. I think what it was doing is leaking oil out and around this this gasket right here it's not in that good a shape so I'm gonna put some gasket maker on both sides sandwich the gasket in between hopefully that does it I'm gonna bolt it back up see if it leaks anymore Okay, I've got the pump snugged up. I'm gonna give it an hour, I'll come back, tighten it down, rehook everything else back up. We'll see what we got. I just pulled the exhaust flapper off. I gotta work on it. <clears throat> it was actually all bent back. I'm gonna have to uh, clean it up, weld this in place. It's flopping around, it doesn't seal up half the time. Well, I threw the flapper and bead blast cabinet. This portion of it actually ended up cracking all the way off, so I'm going to go ahead and weld it now. I think I've got it ground down to where I want it. I'm going to weld it here, and then I'll weld this moving part, the flap, to the bushing so it's not sliding laterally side to side.
Well, there you go. It's not real pretty, but I think it should be good enough to hold. It looks like it's it's closing right now, and it's not wobbling all over the place. So that'll probably do it. Okay, we're gonna hack a few inches off the top of the exhaust so it gets through the woods a little easier. Right there. Yeah. Just needs a little black paint. Okay, I went ahead and got the uh, the nuts tightened back up that hold the power steering pump in place. I got one of the lines hooked back up. I'm gonna get the other. Get the fuel primer back in place. Put the alternator back on. We'll have it buttoned back up. Okay, I got the fuel pump put back on. Some gasket sealer on the gasket. Hopefully that holds now. Put the alternator back. Working on greasing up the front wheels now. Got this all buttoned back up, just waiting on the gasket uh, maker to seal up before I add any fluids to it. And I have to finish tightening this down uh, in another 30 minutes after it set, starts setting.
I just tapped the screen and it turned off. So I was mistaken yesterday, it's actually the left wheel that's wobbling. So we're going to hit it with some heat, try to loosen up these cam lobes, see if we can get it straightened out. What'd you do with that hammer and chisel? I don't think so. Now it is. Somebody in the prior ownership being on it too much. It was an oil field wrench. That's the problem. Those oil patch guys are rough on stuff. Sorry to the viewers. <clears throat> Can't tell if it was moving or not. I don't think it did. Oh. Yeah, there we go. That nice, satisfying pop. How far has it got to go? All the way. What do you mean, all the way? Like that? Yeah. There. <coughs> One down, four to go. Easy one there. Yeah. Should have started with a harder one. <laughs> Proof of concept here. Yeah, yeah maybe. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. What's happening, neighbor? Oh, no, my bigger hammer works. I'm too tired to swing anything bigger. Uh, I 
heard you doing some. I heard you do some hammering yesterday. Oh, I was doing some hammering. I was doing some talking. <laughs> They told me when I got that truck that uh need the rear end. That's what the clanking noise was. Yeah. So I look, you know, change the oil in it. So I It's got neutral, neutral safeties on the. I think so. Yeah. There you go. That done it. All the way. Yeah. Let me look now. Well, let me put this clamp on temporarily and see if it's still wobbling. Oh, just it a bit. All right. Well, they're not even tightening down. It's too far out. See that? It's not, it's not catching. Is the other one that far out? I know what, yeah, this one will be tight. Look here, here's the problem. We got all the weight settling down and it's gapping it oh, up here. Yeah. So, we're gonna have to, there, this will bring it up. Yeah. Keep going, let me see what it's doing.
moving. It must. Yeah. yeah. There, just moving on down. Yeah. You got some oil. Back on up here. Well, we finally got this wheel where we wanted it. It's most of the wobbles out of it. The little bit that's left seems to be where it was setting flat for all those years. That bolts the sidewall out a little bit. We got all the cams tightened down except one. It's it's tight, but we couldn't get it to uh, cam over all the way. We actually ended up shearing that square drive, trying to tighten it down the rest of the way. I got it on with the air hammer and slammed it all the way down as far as we could get it. So we think that's probably going to be good. If we have to make some adjustments later, we will. But finally got it so we're getting the bush hog hooked up and i'm gonna go do some mowing
Well, folks, there you have it. I bought this tractor mostly to use for mowing in tight spots, kind of like I did today. And this is the first time I've been able to get it out and really put it to use. And I think it worked out pretty good. You know, there's a few bugs that need to be worked out. I could hardly fit the bush hog back in here. But, uh, yeah, I'm satisfied with it. I'll make another video when we start pulling logs out of the woods with it for firewood. That'll be pretty interesting. So, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap it up on part one. And thanks for watching.